Velkommen til Ekstrasending i forbindelse med Spekulum Festival 92. Vi sender nå filmen Men's Madness, og denne filmen vil bli vist på denne tiden hver kveld i forbindelse med Spekulum Festival. We're all on a one-way journey through life. And so therefore, sending a person on a one-way trip to the stars that takes his whole lifetime is not a suicide mission. A person gets to do a job that's very exciting. And really, when, when you and I work, we work for all of our lives. Hopefully it's something that's interesting. These people would be the same way. In Japan, the average time spent traveling to and from work is four hours every day. An estimated 537 million cars will be on the road worldwide in 1991. In the USA, 550 tons of meat is consumed by the population each week. Every day, 430,000 newspapers are printed in Britain. Twenty thousand people pass through the station between eight and nine a.m. each day. Like most other people, I'm bored with this endless debate in the news about disaster and crisis. But we're told that now even our most basic needs are poisoned or disease: air, water, food, sex. But it's just talk. Everybody complains about the system breaking down, but most still turn up every day, more afraid to stop then go on. Not all of us struggle to work. There have always been people who objected to the direction we're moving in and resisted it in different ways. But it took more than a few madmen to create this world I was born into. It took faith in their madness, a willingness to be processed and rationalized. A willingness to be slotted into isolated and artificial worlds of work. Each one more insane than the last. The results of centuries of masculine obsessiveness. Each world has experts who defend their territory with impenetrable walls of detail, determined to keep this madness they call progress rolling, whilst providing us with our bigger cars, faster food, smarter computers, more interesting holidays, longer life.
The foreign-built machines require merely 10 minutes from killing the animal to its final packaging for export in cardboard boxes. and initiative of the 20th century have made it the most productive in history. Now my overall posture is that any gain in productivity is always good. That's, that's a fundamental, I consider axiomatic, that you shouldn't even talk about stopping anything which increases productivity. It was easy for me to stop this machine. But the bigger one seems to have the accelerator jammed at full throttle. Ten minutes is all it takes to turn a live cow into beef burgers. Two minutes to eat one. It's only production that makes money. Making things, building houses, making cars, uh, producing washing machines, making computers, if you like. The fascination we have with gadgets and tools makes it hard for us to slow down. We hate pollution, but love our cars. Making, inventing, and buying things keeps us busy. And there are a lot of us to keep occupied. Nature gets devoured and replaced instead with man-made things. Trees go in one end and newspapers out the other. Now here's another thing. Not only are the best tools important, but everything connected with their use is taken into consideration. See how they're placed? Just like machines in our factory. Straight line production. How come they never learn? I imagine today's experts will look just as ridiculous in a few years. Yet they did manage to turn most of the world into a factory, even homes and schools. Even though the factory is out of date in our high-tech society, the world is still being swamped with artifacts. After all, this is the key to man's success, the proof of progress. It's what makes us more than animals. The military world appears on TV as a hovering presence. Most of us rarely actually come into contact with it. Yet half the world's scientists and vast quantities of natural resources are used up to protect us, whether we like it or not. May West once said, Strange, every time I meet a man he wants to protect me. It makes you wonder what from.
Was it a hell of a who did me for the guys last night? USS New Orleans, USS Mount Henry, USS Fresno, USS Arctic, USS Marvel, USS The Spirit, BC Park. Bang! And stretch. Bang! And stretch. Bang! And stretch. Bang! Many men appear to feel at home in this extreme environment, segregated from women, children, and other worlds. Territoriality is still rampant in our high-tech society, as warring gangs of males display common obsessions. the anti-tank rocket, he then throws the weapon away. This makes sense because the materials being used for this weapon are all unique. So we now have an ultimate 80s weapon of fire and throw away. This is the entrance wound from the submachine gun, 450 meters per second. And you see the exit wound here. Mm -hmm. The difference is not, not very big. On the other hand, with the high velocity wound, here you can see the circ circulation is impaired. And if you have a dead animal, you will never see this. Soldiers still strutting around like heroes, protecting us, seem at odds with the scientific essence of modern military technology. Remote, automatic, and hugely powerful modern warfare barely requires the human robots anymore, except as ardent admirers, excited by bigger bangs and the technology to hit more distant targets. Encased in their military cocoon, the outside appearing as blips on a screen enemy tank, enemy child, enemy plane, enemy tree. And detecting other submarines is Commander Walker's main task. His vessel is HMS Trafalgar, a nuclear-powered submarine hunting submarine. every move the other side makes. Aircraft filled with electronic surveillance equipment to check for signs of a surprise attack. If you're listening into people talking, the Russian radio pilot, you still need a head inside of a pair of earphones. Now it's true we can tape that conversation, but we do not have the capability, to my knowledge, to have a computer listen into the conversation and then alert someone if it's an important conversation. If it wasn't so destructive, we could laugh at the absurd paranoia on constant alert, probing and prying into everything, tiresome plotting and counterplotting, wasting everyone's time with their subterfuge. Communist controls imposed in the communist countries after World War II were just of such a draconian sort that the spies had a very difficult time operating at all, or surviving. And therefore, using the techniques we had used in World War II just didn't work in terms of getting spies into uh, the Soviet Union. And we had to devise other techniques, so we turned to technology to help us learn what was going on in that vast, denied area. Here's where the illusion of protection wears a bit thin. I wonder how many denied areas he has tried to penetrate. Whether sexual, scientific, or political. The main priority seems to be gaining access in order to dominate. They describe it as defense,
hiding their drives behind the usual smokescreen. The Pentagon actually described the atom bomb, which wiped out Hiroshima, as a protective umbrella. That's what I call camouflage. I wonder how many were late today, like me. We used to complain about clock watching, rebel against the nine to five syndrome. Yet if anything, people are even more synchronized now to standardized, man-made time, fighting their way through the crowds to get to work on time. It's as if mechanical time, counted in units, has made us more self-conscious of aging. Even though they've hidden the natural processes, birth, aging and death, away in institutions, and try to block the cycles, for the time being at least, we still get old, and then we die. Meanwhile, technologists strive endlessly to extend our lives, perfecting our bodies and minds, improving on nature, and breaking its limits. So you can use colors, you can use little words, you can yeah. use pictures, whatever you like, as fast as you can go, starting now. Real speed. So turn over to test one on page three and start now. One minute remaining, sir. The major corporations in the world, especially the computer corporations, are spending hundreds of millions of dollars a year literally on training their personnel because they know that as soon as the big brains come into their organization their organization wins so we realize that intelligence the use of the brain is if you like the next quantum leap in human evolution in true rational fashion brain experts isolate brains and see them as tools to be used in the race to produce supermen each of their quantum leaps dehumanizing them more and more and merging them with the machine.
They can probably redesign people to keep them in the loop for some time. But why should we want to remain in this undignified race with technology? Push it up and pull it down. Pull it all the way out. Out, 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 out. Ten more seconds. Hang it out. Come on. Good job. Good job. Just keep going. Real hard. Blow. Keep blowing. Keep blowing. Keep blowing. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Pull it down. Just keep walking. Two, three, four, now hold, press up. Two, three, four, now single. One, two, four, fifty-five. Three, four, fifty-five. And another one of our patients has wanted a C-cup because breasts are in. Dr. Roxanne Guy from Melbourne, Florida, is her plastic surgeon. And patient number two wants to have liposuction on her thighs and hips. Her plastic surgeon is Dr. Robert Hines from Dallas, Texas. Patient number three says she's been thinking of having a facelift for years. You know, one thing that really concerns me is the fact that we haven't been progressing when it comes to the attaching of limbs. We might applaud the taking of a limb from a dead person and sewing it directly into the socket of a live person. But when it comes to providing and transplant, whether it's what I like, the idea of the body, or whether it's what others have suggested, the brain, or let's be absolutely frank and say, transplanting the head, we keep coming back to this problem that we're dealing with something that we can all see physically. His main concern is to keep humans in the loop. Dr. Robert Black transplants the heads of live animals, practicing for the time when he can save a human brain by transplanting it into a donor body. I read that he has also been associated with Russian experiments, attempting to attach the live severed head of a cat with wires to a guided missile. I feel the line should be drawn purely at a human life following the teachings of St. Thomas, that man has the right to use animals properly. And just as we use them for food, we must use them to find cures for diseases on developing new drugs and so on. The body of Christ. Ecological experts are now demanding a reduction of the human species. Yet most scientific and religious people still arrogantly argue for human growth even though this threatens to end all life. They make the preservation and extension of human life sacred. Human expansion has always degraded other life forms. Now it requires more and more degradation of humans too. Uh, the section proceeds with uh, scalpel and other surgical tools down to the vertebral column and then uh, the vertebrae carefully separated uh, using uh, standard medical tools, scalpels and so on, uh, and that allows the head to be isolated and separated from the rest of the body. And I think in the future it's going to be possible to inhibit development of the brain before uh, the, in, in, the, in, the, in the gametes themselves so that there's never a question of it being a human being. Uh, when that's done, you would have the potential for a body that could be used to, uh, to transplant a brain into. Unlike girls, most boys, when given the opportunity, relate to machines better than they do to people. Men seem to have been trying to turn themselves into machines ever since they first invented them. 
and they've been celebrating mechanical qualities ever since. Throughout history, men have expressed a desire to distinguish themselves from lower animals and females, elevating themselves and their products above all life. If you ask me what's the point of a scientist, I think I'll just rephrase that and ask what's the point of a human being who sees himself as a machine. It's strange that the desire to be totally rational and eradicate all subjectivity seems to produce an irrational hatred for anything not made by man. example where you take your brain and you replace the neurons one at a time by little pieces of silicon. Mm -hmm. No, no, I like you this. Yeah. Replace it by little bits of silicon. Whatever the real system does, this silicon system also does. I could make a copy of you like this. Let's suppose I make a clone of you. And it will behave just the same. I'd be able to have a conversation with it. It would say just the same things. It's got exactly the same behavior. All men, and this includes those with onboard computers, emerge from their mother's wombs. It's as though these natural origins make them look weak, and they hate that. What they seem to look forward to is a totally rational world, where machines reproduce themselves, parallel to the religious world, which leaves females out of the creation fantasy. Caution. Fuel. Fix it. Fix the fuel. Okay. Max range? Three, four, zero miles. Normal. Normal. God's eye. God's eye. Zoom. Zoomed. This man's idea of utopia, nature is left out altogether, in a world where all body functions will be taken over by machines. But it's his sexual drive which still ties man to the animal world. His sexual instinct apparently drags him down to the level of women and lower creatures. In an attempt to disguise this, Man has elevated sex into both art and science. 
art to excite, and science to measure performance. Sex has been processed like everything else, and the sex machine spews out abstracted and distorted products, aids to an alienated sexuality. Here's a sex machine that never ages. It's custom built. You can have a nurse, nun, housewife, baby, corpse, even one that screams and shows fear. Masculine urges could be satisfied independent from nature, if that's what they want. Imagine a guided missile that thinks like rational man, paranoid, competitive, isolated, and insecure, but sharply focused and deadly. Wars are fought with science. Olympic medals are won with science, which has invaded every aspect of our lives. Our homes, schools, and hospitals turned into high-tech labs. Rationality is displayed everywhere, in a world where science is the dominant religion. does not just behave in an arbitrary way. Instead, it evolves according to well-defined laws. This complete set of laws could give us the answers to questions like How did the universe begin? Where is it going? And will it have an end? If so, how will it end? If we find the answers to these questions, we really shall know the mind of God. Stephen Hawking is totally dependent on others to perform even his most basic physical functions. Yet even though his body is tragically wasting away, his capacity for abstract thought is superb, super developed. Unfortunately, his is the kind of brain Dr. Black would like to transplant. Others, of course, would seek to wire his brain directly to a computer. Anything to extend genius in order for the quest for knowledge to continue. Purely a function of my hand. And the amount of current I put on, you see. I can turn it around and leave it at any level I want, either low or high. And he will do the same thing each time. Mm -hmm. 
think one trait of my personality is irritation with mysteries. If I see something that I don't understand, I want to know how it's done. And uh, I always took apart any mechanism that I couldn't understand. The way I think about what it is we're doing is that we're exploring, we're attempting to discover all that we can about the world. The reason I do science is simply to find out about the world, because the more I find out, the better it is. I just like to find out. Like those experts who will want to take this view apart, bit by bit, using nitpicking logic, the experiments of the scientific method deal with fragments. Even the most accessible scientist solves problems by isolating them, studying bits of things and people. The popular and charismatic physicist who worked on the atom bomb, Richard Feynman, did much of his research in topless bars. Objectification is a strange thing. The tunnel vision of the specialist combines with a masculine eye for detail. They peer, probe, poke, and dissect with detachment. We need to understand species diversity for the same fundamental reasons that we need to understand the origins and the fate of the universe or to sequence the human genome. In fact, uh, if you take the conventional Big Bang theory of cosmology, uh, the uh, time after the very, very beginning where Lep is working is something like uh, one-tenth of a thousandth of a millionth of a second. We believe it's better to make things rational than to accept them as irrational, whether they are irrational or not. Why? Because we can store the information easier, we can transfer it to other people easier, we can, we can uh, communicate easier. Should we assume that things were chaotic, we would have a terrible time. It does raise an important question. Should the scientist be concerned with the ultimate uses to which his work will be put? Should he, for example, have refused to work on the atom bomb because it has the potential to destroy the whole world? And, of course, we've given that answer already. The scientists have given it. Well, that raises the issue about every new advance in science brings up some you know, troublesome issues. I mean, that... You know, the slippery yeah. slopes of science, yeah. again, the sense that... Yeah. It, I don't think you can expect the scientist to be concerned about that matter. Yeah. He, as we all seem to agree, he is internally driven, and he's not concerned with the ultimate consequences. Like the man said, they're internally driven. Driven to probe and dissect. Oppenheimer said that the atom bomb presented them with a technically sweet problem. They couldn't resist it and felt that they shouldn't have to. The first physician in history to keep a primate brain alive outside its body, Dr. Robert J. Black. Maybe instead of Nobel Prizes, we should introduce the scientific equivalent of the Nuremberg trials. They use their neutrality as a smokescreen, whilst demanding the freedom to fulfill their internal drives, which are essentially no different from the military. The need to conquer, dominate, control, and win. In other words, male drives. The major mystery left in biology is the brain, how the brain functions. You say the brain, I agree with that. Yeah. That's natural history. That's, that's describing what exists yeah. in, in 10 years. But yeah. there's another power biology has acquired, which we'll talk about later, yeah. which is to modify, yes, your, yes. To modify I'm, beings. I'm, I'm and that's yeah. another theme which gives biology another power, to modify, yes, your, to modify beings. Learned. Having attacked all other species, scientists now have the power to attack our own. Until recently, reproduction of the species has been regarded as a female-centered activity, and therefore peripheral. 
Now scientists have targeted this last denied area, bringing them to center stage in evolution. It appears our fathers wanted to be mothers all the time. To what extent the human mankind is going to use their knowledge and technology to change, to alter among human being itself? And I don't really know what what we sh we should do about it. There is no theoretical reason why one should not be able to manipulate and alter uh, human embryos and therefore the resultant uh, offspring in exactly the same way as one manipulates and alters other mammals. I suspect that we could be engineered much better than we are and quite possibly will be in another hundred years. So I would say that we should do anything we can. We have to have rules. But if, it's, um, if you need a candidate for a second heart or four arms or two heads, I am one. It looks as though we are about to be bullied into more insanity because we are not informed. What was it the biologist said? Knowledge is power. It has authority. The guidelines for most modern societies are usually based on some book or other mostly filled with rules to regulate and standardize thoughts and behavior. Experts in the past made gods out of these authors and demanded unquestioned belief in their words, words which these experts used to justify their own actions. The menacing specter of Dr. Black, armed with the antiquated text of St. Thomas and the tools of this high-tech world, transplanting animals' heads leaves room for thought thought of a different kind. masters and their sacred laws have rationalized the world to the point of near destruction, which means for them or their scientific sons a lot of new and exciting problems to solve. The solutions are invariably the same. More specialization, more control, more order.
75 feet. Guys looking good, down a half. Lights on. When man steps into his rocket ship and leaves the Earth behind, he must be well equipped to survive in the hostile realm of outer space. That makes him a brand new biological species. Rather than jeopardize their assumed position as masters of all things by calling a halt, they want to adapt us, to give birth to new species, capable of either surviving on this polluted planet or traveling to a new world. could do, which would be the greatest engineering achievement for humanity, would be to terraform Mars. That would be to make Mars into a place that human beings could live. I think Mars is already an ideal place for humans. We needn't bother to go through the process of making it uninhabitable. send our robotic probes first to find a habitable planet. But then I think the imperative that's in all of us to expand will send humans to the stars. And like the Polynesians, only a few people will go. Uh, uh, probably will be a, a very picked genetic pool of a uh, few dozen people. And then they will colonize, not by, we will colonize not by sending more people, but by just letting the population grow. Fortunately for us, it will only be a selected few, presumably suitably adapted. Two heads, part machine, assisted breathing, born of man. Underlying the absurdity of rational man's development seems to be the belief in his superiority. Whether politician, financier, industrialist, philosopher, scientist, or militarist, they all assume the right to invest the world's resources in irrational obsessions. As they have accelerated man's power, the warrior's spear has been replaced by the megaton bomb. A cow made into beef burgers in less than 10 minutes. Yet rather than criticize the idea of progress itself, rationalists blame each other for the mess the world is in. Even the elegant scientists still try to point to greed and ignorance for the planet's drift towards disaster, focusing attention away from their obsessions to know everything there is to know, to do anything that can be done. There is no theoretical reason why one should not be able to manipulate and alter uh, human embryos and therefore the resultant uh, offspring in exactly the same way as one manipulates and alters other mammals. In fact, I believe that by the middle of the 21st century, brain transplantation or its equivalent will be a reality. The clearest dividing point between uh, when human beings are necessary and when they're unnecessary is when fully intelligent uh, mobile robots begin to move around in the world. With little nano machines that have all the information to build anything that you might want to build, you could plant in your backyard essentially a seed that would grow into a Porsche, for example. These insane scenarios for the future seem at odds with the recent projection that all major cities of the world could be underwater in 50 years' time. Men often say that if it was up to women, we'd all still be living in caves. There never were just caves 
or the barren stony landscape this assumes. There was nature, empty of man's technology, but plentiful as a habitat for all earthly species. It's man's obsession with proving himself that is leading us to a real barren earth. Perhaps if Nobel Prizes were awarded for not inventing anything, or we gain status from not owning a car or hi-fi, maybe if we gain recognition for not exploring, or for being the best, the first, or the winner, perhaps then those who produce and consume the least would have the highest respect. Vigo Elektronik i Øvre Strandgade 79 for datautstyr, instrumenter, oscilloskoper, komponenter og bådutstyr som Ecolod, VHF, bådradio og navigasjonsutstyr. Elektroniske byggesett med videre. Stikk innom Vigo AS i Øvre Strandgade 79, telefon 52 83 65. Hvor langt kommer du egentlig for 120 kroner i våre dager? Hos bruktbilutleie på Grannesletta får du leiebil i et helt døgn for kun kroner 120, inklusiv 50 km fri kjørelengde. Ring oss på telefon 65 51 76, enten du trenger personbil, stasjonsvogn, varebil eller pick-up. Bruktbilutleie på Grannesletta har åpent til klokken 22. Ring oss på telefon 65 51 76. 65, 51, 76. Neste innslag er fra Spekulum Festivalen 92. Vi skal nå få se skulpturen Color Space. <tryk> 